Ja. Ähm. The um, our work uh, on the ancient monuments of the Eastern Desert uh, is a very long and uh, not very intensive study. We started uh, in the uh, 1990s, uh, but mainly our work has been uh, uh, related to ecology. Uh, but at a certain time, uh, local uh, authorities told us that if we want, really wanted to do something important for the people, we should try to find their history. And that's why we, in uh, 1994, uh, established uh, a cultural landscape project uh, together with the University of Khartoum. And we, had, we obtained a survey uh, li uh, license and um, uh, um, Dr. Anwar Magid also did some excavations. Um, so, um, first of all, um, uh, the area that uh, will be um, concentrated upon is the area um, uh, in um, at Nupt, which is uh, uh, situated at the border between the Hadendua and the Amara uh, tribes. Uh, and it will concentrate on the so-called Ekratel, the uh, uh, tombs that uh, are attributed to the Blemis, and that we have found all the way north uh, to the uh, Kusir uh, Kenna Road. Uh, so it's, uh, and it's uh, very typical that uh, uh, what has been published about um, uh, lo um, indigenous Tombs are found on the border of the land, along the Nile and along the coast, and very little has been done in the desert itself, which is the homeland of these tribes. Um, the Bejas uh, do not have a written history, and we have to rely on outsiders' uh, stories about them. And uh, there we have the Medjai, uh, which is the name they used in the Pharaonic sources, the Blemis in the Greco and Roman and Coptic sources, and then in Bedja in modern uh, Arab and uh, modern uh, um, uh, sources. The um, uh, two main uh, types of uh, tombs uh, found in the whole area are uh, the um, so-called Ekratels. Uh, and I very much like the comment of the previous uh, talk that there is a continuity, uh, which has been in our thoughts too. The typical uh, Ekratel is built up of a wall of uh, stones filled with uh, uh, smaller stones with a central chamber. Uh, uh, some, uh, the, the burial chamb uh, chamber is dug into the, the, uh, the surface. In others, it's placed on top of the surface. And then around the, the uh, uh, um, circle is placed uh, flagstones or slabs leaning up against it. This is, um, uh, can, can be seen on, on most of the. Now, this is the typical pan graves that are, that are uh, all over. Again, a ring, uh, ring um, uh, structure where they, there is a buried uh, pit in, in the middle. Uh, and they are uh, uh, equally common all over. Uh, so um, uh, we have a third very mysterious form. Uh, which is called the fishtail, Ekratel, um, that is a very complicated structure consisting of two uh, uh, ekratel like tombs with a fishtail attached to them, and then uh, a square, and each of them are uh, connected with a wall with a very, very spe uh, specific type. And on the side of these are uh, door-like stones in, in, in the wall. 
I've um, uh, played with the, the idea that there is a continuity in this from small uh, pan graves to larger ones uh, with um, uh, often connected with a small uh, 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 yeah, is, uh, 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 like an offering place in the in in in, in uh, on the side. That uh, and then uh, they some of them then becomes double, they become higher and higher, and then uh, it, the, the this is very short to the idea of filling this in with uh, smaller stones. Whether or not this is linked to the fish tail and the square towers, uh, I don't know. The uh, chronology of this. Uh, is that uh, we place the uh, the uh, pan graves with the Magi, uh, the Blemis with the Equitals, and then the Beja with the typical uh, Muslim graves. So to the place of Nupt. Uh, uh, the, the Nupt is situated uh, in uh, uh, in um, what they call Aquamt, that drains to the Nile. Um, along um, the Aquamt comes the uh, ancient route that is used up to modern times, uh, going from Berber to Soakin. And the, uh, in this part of this route, the um, uh, route is called Kishadirba which means the slave route. Uh, there is, in addition, a south-north route crossing at Nupt uh, uh, that has um, uh, not been focused so much. Uh, at a short distance from Nupt lay, lays the, uh, what has been called the way station of Tabot, and the similar uh, places are at Samadhi and Mendilo. Recently, uh, uh, we have uh, visited the, a site called Kalibai, uh, which is uh, definitely younger, probably Arab, and is linked to gold mining. It, at Tabot, uh, we find these typical buildings. It's, uh, resembles very, very closely the buildings just presented from uh, Siket, uh, with uh, uh, windows or very often just niches in the sides of the, uh, of the houses. There are several graves surrounding uh, Tabot, and Anwar Majid uh, ex made some uh, excavation of some trenches here, and the dates uh, obtained uh, uh, goes from the 1st to the 11th century uh, CE. Now, the monuments, and in particular the aquatils, has until now been respected in, uh, in Sudan. Uh, and uh, very, very, very seldom you can find uh, graves that has been opened. This uh, changed at the time when the gold price rise uh, in uh, the first uh, decennium, uh, the first uh, tenth years of uh, after 2000. They reached uh, astronomically uh, high uh, values and then everybody, as they say, not everybody, but a lot of people got metal um, um, seekers and started to, um, to rob graves. Uh, we discovered Nupt in the mid 1990s, uh, but it, we later uh, understood that it had been a place uh, of several uh, travelers. Um, and um, um, uh, some of them uh, made extensive uh, surveys in Nupt on uh, one I mentioned Leveline from 1904 uh, and Sanderson Owens from 1995, who made this sketch map, map of, this, of the site, uh, which is fairly accurate. 
due to the robbing of, uh, of graves and other structures in Nukt, uh, the um, uh, Ministry of uh, Environment and Tourism uh, in the state of uh, the Red Sea state um, organized uh, uh, a survey and we were a non-invasive survey of the whole site and we decided to use uh, a drone, a phantom uh, tree uh, to, to map the site as, as detailed as possible. The, uh, the idea was to uh, create a detailed map for, uh, for later conservation, also to monitor changes that were going on. Uh, there's, there was a lot of challenges. Uh, we didn't have a big camp as you had in Berenice and, or in Siket. Uh, we were only uh, the, the uh, three Norwegians uh, coming down, sleeping in the shadow of a tree. And uh, all uh, uh, technical equipment had to be uh, charged on solar and uh, we have problems of getting uh, proper uh, uh, differential GPS uh, reference point. So we worked on the local, uh, uh, local um, system. Uh, here is a, a rough map of NUPT and the areas that we concentrated on. This is Hor uh, Kashma Dirba, the, the slave road coming in from here and meets the Hor Nupt. Uh, Hor is the name of a body in, in Sudan. So uh, that's what we use here. Um, uh, the, um, there is several building areas uh, and uh, Two of them, NUP1 and NUP2, were mapped in detail. NUP3 were discovered during this survey, and uh, we didn't have time to map it. Then, uh, at the junction of the two cores, there is a large area that we called the, um, the uh, necropolis. Uh, of course, it's just an example of the ne of necropolis because the uh, graves are everywhere. Close to that is a small Islamic graveyard that has been the main focus of earlier travelers and the, the, the focus on Nupt. Uh, the reason for that is that the tombstones on this Islamic uh, graveyard uh, represent the earliest uh, um, introduction of Islam in Sudan. But it's a very, very small area compared to the rest of the, the site. So what we did was that we had um, a large number of flight missions. We took over 5,000 images using 25 gigabytes of disk space and, we, uh, and uh, 100 min uh, uh, minutes of video. The strategies used were either uh, that we were flying in, in, in lines uh, or uh, as a grid where we have crossing lines, or we used an ellipse on special ob objects uh, flying in a, a, a more or less a circle over the object, or we used a combination of these three to obtain the images. Uh, we, we uh, flew uh, on different heights depending on the size of the object that we were, uh, uh, the, the main areas were, fl were fl flown from 75 to 50 meters above the ground. The, um, the smaller objects, we flew uh, less than 20 meters. We were usually using a camera angle of 60 degrees uh, and um, uh, we uh, had an 80% overlap between the images. This resulted in a map uh, uh, that uh, covers, this is NUP1, this is uh, NUP2, with uh, uh, 
an, uh, an area nearby. Uh, and we had, this is what we call the graveyard area, uh, where um, special focus was on the ecratels, on the, or, uh, on the, on the um, tombs. Um, in Nupt, there is um, uh, walls uh, separating the different parts. There is one wall uh, that goes between Nupt 1 and Nupt 2. There is a small piece of wall inside the, um, uh, this area, seems to be only of ceremonial uh, practice, or, and there is one wall closing the road uh, Kesha Dirba. We, um, this is the practice, the, the, uh, the, how this uh, mapping works. Uh, we were, um, uh, establishing uh, three d modeling uh, from a procedure called structure for motion and we're processing this in uh, software Argisoft Photoscan. In this case we have flown an ellipse uh, or actually two ellipses at different heights uh, above the object. The first uh, process is to adjust the images uh, uh, to each other and then uh, the uh, images, the, the, the points on the object uh, is identified on the different images. And the angle and distance from each camera uh, or each photograph to every point, uh, identifiable point on the object is calculated. Uh, from that, the, uh, a uh, a cloud or points is established. From the, uh, the point, point cloud, uh, a 3D model uh, is calculated and a digital elevation model. And then finally, the images are draped over the 3D model uh, to make a three dimensional picture. From this, we can make an auto photo for the mapping, which is mainly what we did, or we can study each of these things in the, in the 3D model by rotating it and seeing it from different angles. So first, just to, to get rid of the Islamic graveyard, uh, this uh, uh, area was of so big interest that all the earlier travelers have picked uh, tombstones and uh, carried them to uh, to Khartoum and they are deposited in in the Khartoum museum and uh, very little is known from where they actually came on the site. Uh, later the locals have um, uh, uh, used the stones uh, or re uh, removed them to form a uh, small ring uh, of, with tombstones from different graves, put them together into. So actually, there's not much to, to, to learn uh, on the spatial um, uh, situation on the Islamic graveyard. So I will not talk more of that one. Only, th only thing I one could say is that the stones used for the tombstones with inscriptions of the name of the, uh, and, uh, of the deceased and the date, um, they uh, are taken uh, from the gold mining area, prob probably in, in, in um, Kalibai. So um, here is the whole map, which is uh, generally take a flight of about 50 meters with a resolution of uh, around three centimeters. A more closer area is the uh, wall uh, that uh, crosses the uh, Kishadirba, uh, and there probably had been a gate. Um, here, the uh, flight height is 30 meters, and the resolution is uh, two centimeters, around two centimeters. So, in, in, in more detail, Nook 1 has a building area with small buildings. Uh, the 
uh, structure of these buildings very much resembles the ones that is found in Kalibai, but here they are uh, much more destroyed. Next to uh, the building area is a large building complex uh, that uh, was noticed by Leveline in 1904, and he uh, speculated whether this could be the king's castle. In Nupt II, uh, the building area is uh, uh, near the, uh, the watercourse, uh, and uh, it's uh, very characterized with huge uh, heaps of uh, spoil and, and garbage, with uh, tons of pottery, uh, botanical material, uh, seeds, charcoal, a lot. Um, in uh, one of them, uh, in one of them, uh, we uh, on an earlier visit, uh, visit it was there was a, in a smaller water erosion, and I picked charcoal from the upper layer and have it, had it dated. In um, uh, the uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, next, next to the builded, builded area, uh, we are approaching the uh, graveyard area. Here is three beautiful pan graves uh, situated next to a strange building uh, that uh, Sander and both Leveline and Sander and Owens mention particularly. And there is this strange uh, wall um uh between them then comes uh the area with the the larger uh ecrotel graves as you can see uh very typical on the uh, ecrotels there is a, a hole in the in in the middle this is not a robbery but it is actually the collapsed grave chamber and inside the um the decretel, the, the, uh, the grave chamber, uh, um, the body is buried in a contracted position. Here is from the, what we call the graveyard area. Uh, we have the uh, uh, cluster of a cluster of very large graves. The lot, the, this one here is nearly 20 meters across. across. Uh, on the other side of the hall is a, a, a group or a very densely grouped uh, area with small ecrotels. The modern Muslim graveyard is here. The Islamic graveyard is here. But all you also can see here is that uh, this rather recent road uh, uh, causes a lot of damage. The, the bulldozers, um, at regular interval, collect sand material from the side and use it for road construction. This strange building uh, mentioned by Leveline and Sanders uh, uh, has been speculated whether this is a, some sort of cult building. It overlooks the, the, the main graveyard area and is uh, um, immediately uh, 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 vicinity of the pan graves outside. So the main feature of the are, however, the 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 uh, the tombs. The density of the aquatels in the wider uh, nuked area uh, we calculated. Uh, by identifying them and plotting them on, on digital globe images. Um, the um, a total of 1,345 were, were ident identified in a seven square kilometers area. And for fun, we calculated the volume of 
construction of stonework, and it's uh, more than 14,000 cubic meter constructed graves. This is the same area from the, uh, dig the digital globe uh, images and uh, from the uh, um, drone images. Uh, we can see that it's possible to identify or, or see the, or, or, um, the hole in the middle, uh, but we, uh, it's, uh, we found a very good um, correlation between the uh, amount of, of um, uh, graves that we could identify on the, on the satellite images as the ones that we found on the um, drone images. In this, um, um, uh, from this, we uh, mapped the total areas with uh, acrotels. Uh, there is probably more, but this is where they are, they are uh, dense. Uh, and uh, the, the concentrations um, mount to up to uh, 16 uh, ecrotels per hectare in the more, more, most uh, dense areas. Inserted here is also the uh, uh, similar um, uh, image from Kalibai. To do further statistics on the ecrotels, uh, we uh, extract, uh, automatically made a uh, routine of uh, automatically extracting uh, these uh, structures from the image. That was done by producing a digital uh, terrain model and a digital surface model. Uh, and then subtracting the terrain model from the surface model. Uh, then these, the, what came out of that could be filtered uh, in ArcGIS uh, by rawness, height, and spectral information. The spectral information was, of course, to uh, get rid of trees that uh, entered. These are, these are the, the green spots here. There is a lot you can extract from uh, this digital um, data. You can extract from this di digital uh, uh, maps. Uh, we have uh, just tried to raise some questions and try to answer them. One of them is uh, the uh, distribution of size. Uh, in the area here, we have um, uh, uh, calculated the volume of uh, 2,000 square meter uh, grave building. The size uh, range from uh, a few meters up to uh, around 20. And uh, the height uh, groups is grouped into two different height groups uh, that um, uh, is um, uh, related to the size of the um, the um, of the acrotel, the diameter. Uh, so um, here is the um, is a height uh, and the diameter. A comparison where you have, if it was uh, a random distribution, you will have this, but the real is that we our distribution diverge from the random. So there is a clear um, uh, link between the height and the size of the, of the um, tomb. You, uh, this is also a hotspot uh, analysis, and you see there is hotspots of particularly large um, uh, ecrotels here, and particularly small ones here. 
So it also was an impression uh, that the graves were clustering, uh, that there were clusters of graves. And we uh, wanted to investigate this to uh, as an idea that maybe uh, clusters of grave could uh, represent groups of lineages of people uh, buried near to each other. Uh, for the uh, identification of clusters, we use the distance to, to the nearest neighbor. And we see here that the distance of the small equatels is clear clearly uh, diverged from the random uh, uh, distribution. Uh, with a larger one, it's less clear, but also here it uh, diverged from random. So uh, the, there are clusters. Uh, uh, as we uh, could imagine from from uh, um, from from what we saw, if you look on clustering on the on the whole area um, mapped uh, on uh, also uh, include including the what was mapped on the satellite satellite images, we find the cluster clustering uh, here. Each cluster here is clusters with at, le at least ten uh, members. Uh, and uh, you can see there are some that are not clustered. That is the gray uh, points. Uh, the reason not being clustered here is that the members are less than 10 uh, or that they, they are uh, at, at have a distance larger than 10 meters. So it may, st may still be, be uh, have, have a, uh, a B cluster, but it doesn't fill our uh, criteria. We see that there's pa particularly uh, uh, clusters on, on, on the high part of, of the mountains surrounding the, uh, surrounding the, the, the valley. So uh, we were wondering why is the graves placed as they are? Um, here is a terrain model uh, of the um, uh, area with the builded area, NIFT 3, NIFT 1, NIFT 2. And we wonder whether they were placed there because they should be visible from the, from the build areas. This is the area visible from the three areas. Uh, and the uh, tombs uh, distribute themselves uh, like this. But uh, that cannot be the only reason as only 50% were visible from the building areas. So uh, we also looked at the uh, uh, of, of the aquatels that were visible from the roads along Kishma Dirba and Nupt. Uh, and then uh, we see that, uh, that uh, the 90 percent are visible from buildings or roads. So the, it's clear that the graves are placed where they are because they like to show them. They are not hidden away. They are there for uh, display. And it's uh, very, uh, for those who are a display at the roads, they appear as a sign of the power of the people uh, uh, at the place, the, the owners of the land. Uh, and one can imagine caravans coming along the uh, two routes that they will, they will meet uh, all these huge uh, graves showing the power and strength of the people at Nupt uh, at this meeting point between the caravan routes. Um, so this is, was a short uh, in, uh, note on the, with focus on the uh, Ecrotel and the way that we worked. Uh, uh, in non, we were able to do this without even lifting a stone. Everything was done from above. 
as um, I will place this um, this link at the chat. It's um, uh, about 10 minute video uh, from uh, NUPT, mainly uh, taken from uh, drone images. Thank you.